right, welcome everybody to this episode of O365A. On tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, Copilot, so some key updates and notes from the field. Um, one of the things, a premium feature that has hit Microsoft Teams is this ability to decorate your background. So that uses generative AI. So uh, Michael, why don't you kick us off, tell us a little bit about that, and uh, give us a, a whirlwind tour of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure about a whirlwind tour. Uh, you can see <laughs> myself and, and Dino have kind of modified, uh, uh, adjusted backgrounds. And so this is part of the Teams Premium feature set. And what it allows you to do is when you go under your camera control, you can go under effects. And similar to your, you know, your new blur options like uh, uh, portrait and standard, you now have an option to decorate. And you can do that both on the join screen when you're first launching team, uh, a Teams meeting, as well as you can do that with, while you're in a meeting. So that's a, a new change uh, since it's gone uh, GA, a general available. And then it gives you a couple of controls. So basically what it'll do is it'll kind of take a snapshot of uh, what your camera sees. It will kind of pull you out as a silhouette similar to the most of the blur options. And then it will use the, you know, the, the you know, chat GPT or the, the GPT kind of transformer to, uh, or I think is actually Dolly uh, that it's using to to generate different images. And so you pick something like uh, cleanup or fancy or celebration, and it will generate a, a bunch of different uh, uh, iterations of that. And then you can actually uh, pick from that or generate more and then set it. So uh, I, I fought it a little bit because I have like a gaming uh, chair. And so the chair is, my chair is quite large. So when I um, use the, the the decorate option, it kind of does something with the chair as part of the image. So what I typically will do is I kind of move out of the frame, uh, let it take a nice snapshot of just the background without my chair and myself in it. And then I'll use the decorate option. I, I get a little bit better of a result uh, in that scenario. Dino, your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I mean. It, it's funny because when I stare at mine, I, I think it looks like a real background. And if I turn it off and apply, that's my actual background. And it's not that messy, but you can see that it's kind of busy. There's some things on the shelf. Um, so I really, I, I think it's a great option. And um, mm -hmm. I often just use the, the cleanup one. And I know there's a lot of people that have like really messy backgrounds that just turn it on and... Mm -hmm. It looks like a real natural background. I'm not a huge fan of the blur option always. The, this portrait blur is pretty nice, but the full <laughs> blur kind of distorts my head and things like that. And you know, um, but I, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty cool option. Yeah, looking at both of your uh, your feeds right now, it does a pretty seamless job of. I would would have never guessed that that's actually a, a fake background. Yeah, like so here I'm going to just say clean up on mine and generate a background as we're speaking. And it, even though I'm in the frame, I can, it's done one and I have a couple of choices that I can pick from. I'll just take the one that's got on by default. And you can see it's something similar to what I had. Changes the boxes on the shelf, removes a few things. Um, it actually, I had an MVP. Um, placard in the back and that looks like a picture of somebody now so it really you know <laughs> changes quite a few things but uh yeah yeah th this feature. is a team's premium feature uh, is it in public preview or is it is it released it's released now okay good all right yeah i think um i was gonna talk a little bit about what i'm seeing uh, in terms of the use of AI and, and the, the Microsoft space. And uh, I think for me, uh, first and foremost, I've certainly noticed it's more of a Teams premium thing is a, a lot of pro, uh, project managers are using the recap functionality for meetings they, they, uh, they're not able to attend. So I may be in a work customer workshop, we're doing a technical workshop and they'll just record and transcribe the meeting. And then they'll send a summary out after the fact, which you might think, wow, that's great. I say it actually saves me a little bit of work because I normally have to spend 15, 20 minutes to create that summary after every workshop. The issue is uh, uh, just a bit of a caution is that because they haven't actually attended, it's don't assume that the, the recap is 100% accurate. So it's still, I personally believe, you know, you need, it, it's a tool that 
supplements what you're doing and if you you can't rely on it a hundred percent to 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 say hey i wasn't able to come to this meeting i think you get an excellent idea of what was going on and even call outs with your name but there are instances where it may miss some key things that were said and in some cases it may turn negatives to positives or positives to negatives like we said we're not going to proceed with strategy one two three and sometimes it'll be we will proceed so um I think the key lesson there is you need to review it maybe, and if you have time, play back the meeting as well, if, especially if you haven't uh, attended the meeting. Um, so you just, you know, use it with caution, um, especially when there's key decisions that have been made. And the nice thing is you can go back into the, re into the recap tab and if you, you can just click on, the, on, if there's a key item, a point in the meeting, you can click and it'll just bring the video right there and you can just walk, you know, rewind a few seconds back and listen to it so you understand what's going on and get the context of it as well, right? So yeah, I think I think it opens up a new scenario that I'm seeing as well is that there is a fight to own the meeting. So now there's a you know, who, who gets to put their AI, you know, <laughs> tools and services or who gets to own the transcript or the, the recording because now they they can use their co-pilot. Uh, so I'm starting to see that kind of battle of who, who's going to book the meeting, especially if you're doing like a lot of consulting or working with multiple customers. Um, yeah, there's there's a, yeah, an interesting kind of rock, paper, scissors now uh, going for who, who's going to actually create the invite. Yeah, that's a great point. We we were talking about this at comms be next and we really, I mean, I'd love to see the ability for, you know, if, if both tenants have co-pilot and they have the licensing, it, I feel like if I don't own the meeting, I lose out on that functionality. Mm -hmm. So hopefully Microsoft does something about that so that both sides can take advantage of it. Um, so that remain hopeful there for sure. I noticed a couple of key updates to Copilot for Microsoft 365, which of course is the paid standalone app AI assistant for Microsoft 365. And Microsoft has long been trying to uh, improve the, the whole prompting experience. So make it easier for users to write the right prompts to get the desired effect. So they've uh, they've released some, some new features. One is uh, autocomplete. Uh, so in my, uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365, when you start to type a, a prompt, Copilot will provide suggestions to help users get more relevant results. So that's uh, that's really useful. And uh, the ability to rewrite prompts. So um, Copilot can take a, a basic prompt and then rewrite a richer one with more detailed instructions, which will help uh, users get, uh, get better results. And for those familiar with uh, Copilot Lab, so when you're in the uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot. Uh, there's a lab button that Michael's going to show right now, which takes you to a whole library of prompts um, in the view prompts below. And this is a um, a library of pre-built prompts to do a bunch of things. It really helps you get started with with Copilot. And so they recently announced that um, um, you'll be able to publish. Uh, in Copilot Lab, your prompts make them accessible to others. So I think that's really powerful in an organizational context because you may have people on the same team author really useful prompts which do accomplish something specific to the team or to a project and you just be able to share them uh, from the central interface. I know you, you guys, have you used uh, Copilot Labs much? Yeah, I, I, I like that it's like, embedded in the actual experience now within Copilot. So you you may not even know that you're using Copilot Lab as it's, you know, suggesting different prompts and, uh, you know, kind of you're just navigating through what, what you should ask or do or how you should interact with it. So, uh, yeah, I like how it's seamless. Before it was kind of its own separate page. You'd have, you can only access it, obviously, if you have Copilot. So it's nice to see it embedded now that if you're licensed. Yeah, and I think I think it'll also improve. I think we haven't seen the ability yet to be able to save, um, like create your own and save your own prompts, and then 
also share them with others. I think that's going to be huge. I think we, you know, we had some discussions previously around the whole um, prompt engineering on how important that's going to be within a, as a role within your organization, so that uh, you know your end users uh, or these prompt engineers can build these specific prompts and then share them within the organization to be used across the you know the different uh, applications and platforms that uh, that you're using. So I think that's. Uh, um, a really cool experience that's going to be coming. Yeah, for sure. I, and I think we talked about this during our Teams Nation talk. I think there's like, I was Michael specifically, like there was the art of Google searching before, or Bing searching. And like we all had our kind of Bing foo or Google foo where we knew how to ask it specifically. Well, prompt, prompting is the same. Like you, it, it becomes a skill you have to figure out. And spe specifically with Copilot, like, you need to think about the four things that make up a prompt, which is a goal, a context, an expectation, and a source. So you can ask it, you know, you can point it to certain materials, give it a bit of context, and give it a, a, a goal. And once you start to figure the, the, those things out and order them in the right way, you'll start to get better results, I think. And and if you, you know, at first, if you don't get quite what you're looking for, re-ask again in a slightly different way and you'll, you make it a, a better result. And I think the fact that we have like Copilot attached to meetings and calls allows you to kind of test those different scenarios out, especially when they kind of give you those those hints of what, you know, what prompts to work. So uh, in this this demo tenant, we have like a call here. You know, you have your, your transcript, uh, but we have that recap this call, right? So it's the kind of Teams premium feature of like, hey, here's the summary of the call. But if you also have Copilot, that's where you could be asking questions through the, the chat um, during the call or after the call. And if you're doing that during your call, then you could also get that information after the call. So you can ask it like, hey, list action items. It can give you prompts to suggested prompts. Uh, yeah, you can say, you know, based on, you know, the things that we've been talking about, you know, what are key takeaways, what are, you know, what was unresolved. So it's, it's pretty powerful stuff when you think about, you know, these different interactions and how we can leverage AI in that. So if you're, you know, an agent, maybe in a team certified contact center and you're taking all your calls in teams, well, now you have, you know, Copilot that could be available as part of that or, you know, maybe you're you're doing other, uh, you know, maybe you're an agent on a help desk or something like that. Wow, I I didn't know you could ask questions mid call. That's uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, just quickly, uh, Michael, to get the Copilot for Teams phone, do you need Teams Premium to get the? You just so need the Teams Premium to get the recap, uh, right? So you, the recap uh, in meetings and calls is under Teams Premium, but the the interactive Copilot is through the the Copilot for M365. That goes across your meetings, your you know your different office apps like Outlook and, and Teams and Excel and and all those fun things. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, and then I think uh, on my side, you know, there's uh, one. Uh, I would say a significant announcement that uh, I think the anticipation of Microsoft Places uh, coming into public preview today. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think a lot of organizations, uh, you know, have been uh, waiting for this uh, functionality. And then obviously um, with its release, Microsoft is um, uh, integrating the Places data into Copilot. Uh, so you can make, you know, your coordination a little bit easier, right? Whether, um, you know, understanding sort of the best days to come into the office, uh, maybe even share reasons on sort of the best days to come in, um, like highlighting things like certain in-person meetings or, you know, what coworkers are going to be there or when they're going to be planned to be there. And then <clears throat> you can even ask, you'll be able, I shouldn't say, <laughs> you'll be able to ask Copilot to maybe even adjust um, your schedule based on certain information uh, and changing work locations and stuff like that. So I think that's um, again bringing all these new AI features into um, new technology that Microsoft is is releasing. Right. So I think you're going to see a lot of um, continuance, um, I guess, from that perspective. 
Interesting when you think about that hybrid work of like asking Copilot what days I should come into the office based on, you know, my team schedule and who's coming into the office. Um, you know, and I, it, it's not just, you know, kind of the Copilot stuff, it just places in itself. Like I've seen some of the, the feature sets where it's like, hey, you know what, I'm going for lunch. Who's nearby me that's in the office and, and send out a message to those that are around so that you can kind of, you know, kind of get that that human connection when you're you're physically in a, a space. I wonder if there's some nefarious examples of like who should be in the office and isn't. <laughs> but, Maybe um, Copilot could tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, that's really cool. Powerful stuff. So yeah, that was just a few updates and notes from the field on the Copilot front. I think uh, in future episodes we'll we'll dive into uh, more Copilot specific scenarios and and um, Copilot. Uh, uh, workflows and the specific applications. I think that, that'd be really powerful too. So we'll leave it at that. Thanks everybody. And we'll catch you on the next episode.